<laughs> uh, Aaron, thank you so much for the uh, kind introduction. I can't uh, help but keep thinking that it feels like I'm at Digital Davos, so it's very, very good to be here. But hey. so we should start. So, listen, Gina, you and I have known each other for a while. It's really exciting to be able to sit down and have thank a conversation you. with you, thank um, you in front of such an extraordinary room. Um, the world knows you as an amazing actor, um, but you're so much more than that. I mean, you are working with the United Nations at such extraordinary levels, and you know, I wanted you to share with us what takes you on that journey from being an actor to being somebody who is intimately involved in the work of the United Nations. Uh, well, I've, I've been uh, advocating for women and girls uh, for quite a long time. Um, I was, uh, after playing uh, baseball in a league of their own and kind of learning how empowering sports can be, uh, I became a trustee of the Women's Sports Foundation for 10 years and had a, um, a website uh, called Gina Takes Aim uh, that was about uh, Title IX and then I got very involved in, in uh, promoting Title IX. Uh, and uh, I'm also, now I'm on the board of uh, the White House Project and uh, I'm also on the California, I was appointed to the California Commission on the Status of Women. Uh, and so things just keep leading to, to other things. Uh, and uh, my relationship with the UN uh, came about because of the, the work that I've been doing at my institute, uh, which is an institute on uh, gender in media. And uh, the UN happens to also think that uh, the gender, global gender images are, uh, are very impactful and, uh, and that negative images are really hampering the efforts to reach equality. So um, we've been working together on that. You know, it's interesting. It it's <clears throat> goes without saying it's not uncommon for uh, actors to attach themselves to a cause, but you, in my opinion, personify what actors should be doing, which is a whole lot more than that. Um, you, you left some things out of, out, out of the list that, oh. that, that uh, you've been doing with the United Nations. I find it interesting you know, that you've testified in front of Congress uh, for the UN's Treaty on Women's Rights. Uh, and you've spoken at the UN Economic and Social Council. Uh, you also helped launch the United Nations' newest uh, agency, UN Women, earlier this year. So uh, talk to me about why the UN Women Initiative is so important. Yeah, UN Women is a fabulous new entity created by the UN, uh, which is um, empowered to, uh, to <clears throat> increase gender equality, and uh, empower women. And uh, it's an incredibly important goal, uh, not just for, for the sake of empowering women, but for really impacting everything that, that, uh, that um, influences, influences us in society. Um, the MDGs, you know, there are eight MDGs, and number three is the one about empowering women and achieving gender equality, but the UN recognizes that uh, raising up women around the world will impact hunger, the environment, uh, and all of the other issues that we're dealing with. So it's, it's become a critically important to the UN to uh, promote women and uh, gender equality. So talk to us, if you would, about what pulls you into initiatives. You know, there's, you know, I, I know personally that you're very committed to doing things that'll actually move the needle. Right. So what draws you into those opportunities? Right. Well, uh, as far as the gender and media issue, uh, because I'm in the industry and, you know, for a long time and, and know everyone, uh, it's really worked out well for us to, you know, we do this research on gender images in media made for kids, like family films, GPG and PG-13. And, uh, and the results are of, of this research, which spans a 20-year period, uh, show that there are far fewer female characters. And the characters that are there are very narrowly stereotyped and uh, very often hypersexualized. So we take our research directly to the studios and the creators, the producers uh, and uh, writers, the animators, and uh, we have a very collegial relationship. It's not at all um, attacking. It's, 
helping them recognize uh, the lack of female characters and the lack of uh, healthy representations of women. And they're incredibly responsive. And I think uh, that we actually will see the needle move by 2015, is my prediction. Uh, the percentage of female characters didn't improve at all from 1990 to 2010. But, uh, but I feel confident that it, that it will move uh, significantly by 2015. So that's exciting. I mean, to be able to be involved in something that actually happens is, uh, is very exciting. You know, it's interesting. I uh, have to tell you, I jumped at the opportunity to sit down and have a conversation with you in front of a group like this because as it relates to variety, um, we are nothing short of fascinated by the research mm. that the Institute is generating. Um, and as you know, um, and as our industry will soon know, we're going to begin filtering in some of that information because the education process is such a critical part of encouraging change. So, mm -hmm. so that's that. I mean, I think we begin publishing it on Friday, if I'm not mis oh, not mistaken. So, that's but great. but I I want to spend some time talking a little bit more uh, in depth about the institute's work. Um, talk to us about the connection between what you're doing at the UN and the institute. Right. Well. Uh, the fact is that 80% of the media consumed worldwide is created in the States. So we are the ones that are exporting this, uh, the negative portrayal of women around the world. I actually, the other day, uh, I was in Washington and at an event and uh, a woman came running up and said she was from Congo and why were we sending these horrible TV shows to Congo when they're trying to raise up women and we're sending uh, Beverly Hills housewives over there. She was like, why are you doing this? I'm try you know, I'm trying to help. Uh, but uh, we really are um, helping to support the idea that women are not as important as men or that their function is to be attractive. So, uh, so it makes sense for us to take a global perspective on this. Um, you know, the UN is doing so much work to help women. There's so many opportunities for educating girls and, uh, uh, you know, microfinancing for women and, and all these projects they have. But if the cultural message is continually that women are, uh, you know, not, uh, not equal, then it, it does, it's tearing down other efforts. You know, you're trying to raise them up, and at the same time, there's a heavy, heavy message that... Um, women can't do a lot of things. You know, to that, to that extent, uh, you're staying in New York for a few more days, and on uh, Friday we'll be uh, having the first symposium on gender and media. So tell us right. why you're doing it and who's involved. Right. Well, this is going to be our first uh, global symposium, and uh, we're bringing in folks from all around the world uh, to participate and have a, uh, a very uh, frank and... Uh, uh, um, open discussion about what is the status of gender in media right now, what, uh, what is the research maybe from other countries uh, that we haven't had access to, and what can we do together to, uh, first of all, promote the idea that raising up women's image uh, in media will impact uh, society, will, will make some societal change. And we also, our ambitious goal is to start talking about doing uh, a, a global study of the impact of media on girls and boys as far as how they see uh, women and girls. So um, that's basically what we're trying to accomplish. I love the tagline, which is, if they can see it, they can be it. Right. Um, so explain to us what needs to happen in order to begin generating that positive uh, image and, and positive role models. Right. Um, currently, the media that kids consume uh, has very few female characters who have uh, uh, occupations or aspirations beyond seeking romance. Um, we actually did a, part of a study, we're gonna look at the occupations of female characters in G, PG, and PG-13 films and also on television, uh, but we've done part of the, the G study and we found that 81% of the characters holding jobs were male. And uh, of the female characters who had occupations, 
Uh, there were no scientists, lawyers, uh, medical, uh, no one in the medical profession, uh, lawyers, um, business people, politics, basically very, very few women that were holding important types of positions. So uh, this, this has a tremendous impact on, on girls. In fact, we know that the more hours of television a girl watches, the fewer options she thinks she has in life. So there's clearly a very, very strong message coming through that boys are picking up too, by the way, that, that girls can't do as many things as boys can. And uh, uh, the, the opposite of that what, uh, is, because media, we know media images are so powerful in a negative way, we also know they're incredibly powerful in a positive way. And that if girls can see female characters in untraditional uh, occupations, they're much more likely to pursue unstereotyped jobs when they grow up. You know, it's interesting, I'm a firm believer that uh, perception is as important as policy. Mm -hmm. So, in your opinion, what can the entertainment community be doing to support and help tackle these issues like you know, violence against women that UN Women is focused on? Right, well, uh, that's what we talk about with them uh, and we, uh, we're encouraging them to add a lot more female characters or change male characters into female in their scripts before they, before they shoot. Um, the, the interesting thing is that when we've presented our research at studios, uh, they're shocked. They can't believe what we're, what we're saying. Uh, for example, that only 17% of crowd scenes are female. It's like, why would that be? Nobody's, nobody is actually deliberately saying, let's leave out a lot of women and show society that where there are very few women that exist. It's just a, a sort of a default habit. And uh, so we're encouraging them to think about it, add more women uh, throughout the movie, uh, but also to think about the occupations of the female characters. And I think, frankly, that if there, if there are more female characters, by definition, they will have to have them do more varied things. You know, you can't just have the one hot girl who uh, comes in and whips off her helmet and her hair flies around. <laughs> and all the guys go, wow, she can actually drive race cars or whatever it is. Um, I'm so tired of that. <laughs> When are we going to get over the idea that uh, it's shocking that women can do things? Like, I, I, see, I see shows... <laughs> I see shows through my children's eyes now. I have a nine-year-old daughter and twin boys who are seven. And mustn't they think, well, why didn't they think the girl could do that? You know, when they see... It just happens over and over that there's a reveal of the, of the one female character who uh, is actually competent. So, um, so we're working on how they portray the female characters, that there needs to be a lot less hypersexualization of the characters, uh, really get away from the idea that the function of female characters is eye candy, um, make incredibly diverse female characters, like we're, we're not interested, in our institute, we're not saying add role models. We're saying add complex, uh, unique, uh, and unconventional female characters who are doing a lot of interesting and different kinds of things. Um, and I think that will go a tremendous way toward uh, improving the image of women in, uh, in all cultures. Yeah, well, I, for one, applaud you on the work you're doing. Um, you. We're thrilled that we're going to help you get that message out there. Um, we hope that you help us get the message out there as well, because, because that message needs to go far wider than simply the entertainment industry. So right. thank you, and it was a thank pleasure you. speaking with you. Thank you very much. <laughs>